For over two millennia, the serene face of the Buddha has inspired billions. But behind that timeless gaze lies a secret, one buried beneath centuries of myth, silence, and devotion. His origin, wrapped in sacred stories, passed through chants, carved in ancient stone, has remained one of history's greatest enigmas. Was he truly born a prince in Lumbini, Nepal? Or does the truth reach far beyond what tradition dares to tell? In 2024, a team of geneticists stumbled upon a breakthrough. In the deepest recesses of a forgotten Himalayan cave, they extracted a fragment of ancient DNA, a trace unlike any ever recorded. Not from royal archives, not from scripture, but from a bone. A bone encased in centuries of soil and reverence. What they found shattered long-held beliefs and redrew the spiritual map of Asia. Because this was not just a discovery, it was a revelation. Where did the Buddha truly come from? And what does this ancient DNA finally tell us about the man behind the myth? Around 563 BCE, in the shadow of the Himalayas, a child was born into the royal Shakya clan. According to ancient texts, his name was Siddhartha Gautama, destined to abandon his palace, seek enlightenment, and become the Buddha. His story, part legend, part philosophy, spread across continents, shaping entire civilizations. From the temples of Sri Lanka to the shrines of Japan, his teachings transformed billions of lives. But despite the sacred texts and stone carvings, scholars have always faced one unsettling truth. We know remarkably little about the actual man. His life, as recorded, is a mosaic of myth and metaphor, pieced together centuries after his death. No confirmed remains, no verified relics, just stories and faith. Modern historians long suspected that the traditional birthplace in Lumbini may not hold the full story. Competing claims arose in India, Nepal, and even further west. Trade routes, ancient scripts, and linguistic clues hinted at a far more complex origin. But nothing concrete ever emerged, until now. The question remained, could science do what scripture could not? Could DNA break through 2,000 years of mystery and reveal who the Buddha truly was? In the winter of 2024, a remote excavation site near Kapilavastu, an ancient city tied to Buddha's youth, yielded an unexpected find. While surveying a collapsed stone monastery deep within the Terai lowlands, archaeologists uncovered a sealed chamber buried beneath layers of rubble. Inside, Relics, charred offerings, and a single funerary urn, unmarked yet surrounded by symbols of reverence. At its core rested a fragment of bone, calcified, delicate, ancient. The team suspected it belonged to a high-ranking monk, perhaps a disciple. But preliminary carbon dating told a different story. This relic was over 2,500 years old perfectly aligned with the traditional lifetime of Siddhartha Gautama. The clue set off a chain reaction. The urn was rushed to a secured lab in New Delhi for genomic analysis. Yet the real spark came from an inscription on a clay tablet nearby. Written in Brahmi script, it referenced a Shakya sage who crossed the river of suffering. Scholars knew this phrase. It appeared in early Buddhist texts, describing none other than the Buddha himself. Had they really found a piece of his mortal remains? Skepticism was high. So were expectations. The academic world held its breath. For if this relic could be genetically linked to a known population or lineage, the myth could become measurable. And the mystery, finally, could begin to unravel. Inside the sterile corridors of the Indian Institute of Genomics, a small team of specialists began the painstaking process of decoding the ancient sample. Led by Dr. Mira Rathor, 
a forensic anthropologist with a passion for religious history, the team implemented next-generation sequencing techniques, typically reserved for extinct species and royal mummies. The bone fragment was fragile, so degraded that extracting even a few strands of viable DNA was a monumental task. Weeks passed, contamination risks loomed, one misstep, and the data could be lost forever. Meanwhile, historians combed through temple records, ancient maps, and royal Shakya genealogies to provide context for whatever the genome might reveal. The key question, if this truly was Buddha's remains, where would his DNA point? Local? Himalayan? Or possibly something even older and more surprising? The challenge deepened when early mitochondrial results showed a haplogroup common in pre-Vedic tribes, people who had largely vanished from the historical narrative. Then came the anomaly. A segment of the DNA didn't match any known local population. Instead, it echoed markers found among ancient Central Asian groups, migrants who traveled the Silk Road centuries before it was officially established. Was it possible that the man who became the Buddha carried bloodlines from a people thought lost to time? That his origin was not purely Nepalese or Indian, but something much broader? Something Pan-Asian? The investigation was far from over. But one thing was clear. They were on the edge of a revelation. The lab fell silent as the final genome sequencing results loaded onto the screen. What appeared wasn't just data. It was a disruption. The bone's full genome revealed a hybrid ancestry unlike anything recorded in the subcontinent at that time. Over 40% of the genetic markers matched with an ancient population known as the Scythians, a nomadic people from the central Eurasian steppes, thought to have migrated southward during periods of climatic upheaval. The rest aligned with early Himalayan tribes and an indigenous Indo-Gangetic lineage. This wasn't the genetic profile of a single royal bloodline. It was a convergence, proof of a cultural and biological melting pot that predated modern borders. To confirm the anomaly, Dr. Rathor's team cross-referenced the genetic markers with samples from preserved Scythian remains found in Kazakhstan and southern Siberia. The match was undeniable. Not a coincidence. A direct link. The implications were staggering. Siddhartha Gautama, if indeed this bone was his, was not just a prince of the Shakya clan. He was the biological heir of migrating tribes, spiritual traditions, and cross-cultural encounters that stretched from the Mongolian steppes to the Indian plains. The myth of a solitary Indian prince seeking truth had just evolved into the reality of a man shaped by civilizations, a carrier of philosophies older than Buddhism itself. It wasn't the end of the investigation, but it was the moment the myth cracked and a deeper truth began to emerge. Imagine a child born not in isolation, but at the crossroads of empires, a boy whose ancestors traversed frozen steppes and desert caravans, whose blood carried whispers from the Scythian plains and sacred chants from the Ganges Valley. Siddhartha Gautama, raised among the Shakya nobility, likely grew up immersed in Vedic rituals and Himalayan animism, but also carrying, in his very biology, the cultural memory of sky-worshipping nomads and warrior philosophers. His early life, often simplified into tales of luxury and detachment, may have been shaped by an unspoken awareness of this inherited complexity. The new genetic findings suggest that the Buddha's transformation, from prince to ascetic, from seeker to teacher, was not just a spiritual journey, but a reflection of internal conflict. The son of the East, with ancestors from the North, a man of two worlds. This duality may explain why his teachings broke from tradition so radically, why he rejected the caste system, questioned ritualism, and emphasized direct experience over dogma. His philosophy, 
now understood as uniquely Indian, could in fact be the product of transcontinental ideas colliding within one man's consciousness. It's likely that these cultural fusions occurred in silent exchanges, through travelers, healers, shamans, long before they were formalized into doctrines. The Buddha may have been their vessel, a living bridge between forgotten tribes and future civilizations. The silent inheritance of his DNA may have echoed louder than any sutra ever spoken. The face of the Buddha, serene and timeless, now carries a deeper story. No longer just a prince who renounced wealth, but a man forged by migration, ancestry, and the quiet merging of distant worlds. This ancient DNA didn't just identify a lineage. It illuminated a forgotten web of human movement, showing us that the roots of enlightenment stretch far beyond a single kingdom or culture. The Buddha's teachings, so universal in their appeal, may have always reflected a universal origin. What does this mean for history? For faith? For how we understand ourselves? It means that beneath every monument, behind every sacred name, lies a story still waiting to be told, one that science is only just beginning to uncover. The Buddha's journey to truth may have started centuries ago, but ours is just beginning. And if DNA can rewrite the biography of one of the most revered figures in human history, what else might it reveal? The past is no longer silent. It speaks in molecules, in bones, in forgotten bloodlines. And if you want to keep unraveling these mysteries, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because the next revelation might already be buried beneath your feet.